Hi and welcome to another Essential Lightroom video. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to go through and show you how you can create this VSCO or Visco SPO1 inspired effect. As you can see, it's got a nice contrasty look, a little bit of crushed blacks, slightly desaturated colors, but has a nice retro kind of feel to it. So details of this preset are available in the description below, so you can download that. Always recommend sticking around, watch the video tutorial so you can see exactly what's being affected, how the work is being carried out, so when you make changes to your specific image, you'll know how to get the most out of both your image and the preset that's available. Well, let's take a look at how we can do this now in Lightroom. So this is our starting image, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through step by step creating the effect that we've got in the preset. We're going to go through in the develop module in Lightroom, and I'm going to take you step by step through each of the different panels that are used in each of the different settings. So by the end of the video, you're going to have a good understanding of not only how to create the effect, how to use the preset, but also how to get the best out of that with the image that you're working with. So let's start off with the basic panel. Now this specific image, I want to make some slight alterations to it to get it where I want before I start influencing the colors and things along the tonal information. So what we're going to do is I want to warm this up because at the moment it's all looking a little green and I want to bring in a little yellow into that. So we're just going to take the temp slider and we're going to drag that over to the right hand side. Not too far, probably about plus 10 to plus 15, somewhere in that kind of region, just to bring some yellow back into the grass, take away just the overpowering greenness to it. I'm going to take the exposure and we're going to bump that up probably about a half a stop for this image. I'm not going to go crazy. Somewhere around that kind of region looks pretty good. And we're going to grab the contrast and we're going to give that a good push over to the right hand side. About plus 60, somewhere in that kind of region to get some nice strong contrast in the edges. So next up we've got the highlight shadows, whites and blacks. And we're going to make some adjustments to those. We're going to grab the highlights and drag those down to the left hand side to make sure that we keep the highlight information. So about minus 60 goes pretty well for this image. And the shadows, we're going to give those a bump. So we open those shadows up. About plus 40 kind of works pretty good. Somewhere around that kind of region. You can see we start to open things up now and make it look a little bit flat and dull, which is kind of where this particular preset starts off. But we start to add some more contrast in there in a moment. So let's go down to the whites. As we've done before, we're going to grab the whites, we're going to drop those down to about minus 45, minus 50, and exactly the same with the blacks, around about the minus 40 mark. So there we go. So you can see we've now got quite a punchy looking image, strong colors with flat, sort of crushed blacks in the shadow area. So that's pretty good. Next up, let's give it a bit of a punch with the clarity so we get some nice contrast between the highlights and the shadows. Not too much, about plus 10 works pretty well for this image and the vibrance because that's going to influence the warmer tones, the yellows, the greens, the skin tones and things like that. We're going to give that a nice bump up about plus 20, 25, somewhere around that kind of range to give some real punch to that grass and the skin tones and things. And then the saturation, we're going to do the opposite because that's going to influence all of the colors, but primarily focus on the sort of duller colors. So let's grab the saturation. Let's pull that down about minus 25. And what we've kind of done is we've compensated for the increase in vibrancy in the warmer tones and reduced the overall saturation, having a bigger effect on the cooler tones in the image. Hope that kind of makes sense. So we finished now with the basics panel. So we're ready now to move on to the tone curve. So let's take a look at how we can really start to stylize this image through the tone curve alterations. Okay, so let's open up the tone curve panel. And we've got our tone curve. Just remember that we want to work in the point curve mode. So if you're not in that, you simply need to click on this little icon in the right hand corner. And that switches between the two modes, the linear mode and the point curve mode. So once we're in this, we can now start to directly influence the tonal information in the image specifically by targeting the curves in this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of points in and we're going to make a really slight adjustment to this. We're going to come down into the shadow area. Now, if you take a look at the histogram, you can see anything sort of past this point, the, how can we say, the mid dark area, there's nothing left in there because we've gone through with the basics panel and we've crushed a lot of that down in there. So when we're in the tone curve, anything we do in that point from there up, is going to make pretty much no difference to the image but where we're grabbing the point at this area this is where it starts to influence the darkest parts of the image as we've edited it so what we're going to do is we're going to drag those down a little bit that's going to crush those blacks down a little bit more and what we're going to do is we're just going to bump up 
the highlight information. So we're not going to go crazy. It's a very slight S curve. So you can take a look at before and take a look at after. And what we've done is we brought some contrast to the overall image while keeping those blacks crushed. So that starts to add a nice sort of tonal information to the image. And that's all we need to do with the tone curve. It's a pretty subtle effect, but it makes the difference to this specific image. And finally, we're going to jump into the HSL panel and we're going to make some slight tweaks. Now, remember, this is based upon the image you're working with. So you'll probably have to make different adjustments to the image that you're working with, unless it kind of has a lot of these same kind of tones and colors available. Now, we're not going to touch the hue. I don't want to change the colors in this image. I just want to affect the saturation and a slight amount of luminance alteration. So we're going to come down to saturation first of all, and we're going to concentrate on the green, aqua, and blue, because other than that, there's not a huge amount of other colors in this image. So what we're going to do is we're going to desaturate those down. So we're going to grab the green. We're going to desaturate that by minus 25, around that anyway. We're going to do exactly the same for the aqua and exactly the same for the blue. All desaturate in the same value. And you can see now once we've done that, if we before and after, you can see because they're the primary tones in the image itself, we desaturate those. We give it a nice retro kind of effect. Next up, let's come down to the luminance. And we're going to affect the exact same three colors, but we're going to boost them this time. So we're going to grab the luminance for the green, take it up by around the same amount, around 25, 26, somewhere in that kind of region. Exactly the same for the aqua, and exactly the same for the blue. And again, let's take a look at it before and after. So there's our initial. There's where we've edited it. So you can see we've now desaturated those colors. We've given them a nice retro feel with the crushed blacks. It all works really nicely. And it's a great looking uh, preset that you can use. It's a great looking effect that you can use in your Lightroom edits. Works really, really well if you're putting photographs up on Instagram or things along those lines where this kind of effect is very popular. Well, that pretty much wraps up the video on how to do this VSCO or Visco SPO1 inspired effect. The details for the preset are in the description below, so you can go and grab that. If any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, or you've got any specific kind of looks or effects that you'd like us to take a look at replicating for you, please pop the comments in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.